Hey folks, it's Jim, it's Julie, it's Julie's birthday! Happy Yay! birthday, Julie! And it was Leela's birthday yesterday, so please be sure to wish them both a happy birthday. And if you haven't wished me a happy birthday yet, mine was last week, so wish me a happy birthday! It's birthday week, so birthday's birthday month. For, birthday's for everybody. Yay! So where's our cake? Hiding. Uh, okay, you ate it, didn't you? No. Mmm. All right, well, let's get to some comic book reviews, shall we? It's what we do best here. First up this week is Todd, the ugliest kid on earth. This book was fantastic. It was the best Which book I read this week. saying a lot, because we both thought it would be terrible. Yeah, I, I pegged it for not so great. And, I and actually, we actually fought between who was going to actually have to review it. Yes. So surprising. I got to get it, and I'm really, really happy. This book is about Todd. He is the ugliest kid on earth, and his parents force him to wear a paper bag over his head. I remember those days. <laughs> is, was your name secretly? Any, no. So, going on. Uh, I'm just ugly. <laughs> Todd is a very sweet boy who loves everybody, just wants to make friends. He has a, His parents won't let him have a pet, so he captures insects and brings them into the house. Mm. And he lives in a fairly, um, let's call it dysfunctional American household. Just a tad. Just a little bit. And the problem comes in when a rampaging psychopath mm comes to town and starts abducting and murdering small children and Todd gets the blame. Hmm. Poor Todd. Poor Todd. This book is super cute. It has a lot of witty repartee, a lot of uh, commentary on American society. I really, really enjoyed it. The art isn't bad at all. I quite enjoyed it. I felt like it It had its cute moments. It fit the book. Yeah. So I really think that you guys should go out, give this book a chance, because I really enjoyed it, and I think you will too. All right, a book that I did not enjoy at all is Grim Fairy Tales Animated One-Shot. And then, At least it was a one-shot. Yeah, we don't have to suffer anymore. Uh, in this one, Sela tells Gina the real tale of Hansel and Gretel to uh, teach her and her friend a lesson about their choices in life. And we learn... Okay. Just how bad a book can look when three different artists are trying to draw the same same book. You know, I didn't find it that bad. You know, the thing that really ruined it for me is the flow. When you have one artist drawing a book and you switch to another artist on the next page, it really ruins the flow overall to me. See, I felt like... I'm not saying anything bad about the art here. No, the, no, the art art's nice. Is nice. I felt like when they made it... It just really does ruin the flow when you have three different people, three distinctly different styles to tell the same story. I'm going to disagree with you on this one. All right. I don't feel like the artist switches made it that bad. I feel in my quick glance through like they timed the artist switch as well so it felt like it was a scene change when you're watching a movie or something like that and the camera quality changes but a little bit but if this is supposed to be an adaptation of an animated show that is in a particular style then stylistic changes do not work it works if you're changing the setting if you're changing from being inside to being outside i feel like it works well, personally, I don't think it works, and as always, the writing here is just pretty much subpar, as with most Grim Fairy Tales books, so I can't highly recommend it, but as always, if you are a Grim Fairy Tales fan, you're probably going to enjoy it. Uh, just, this was not for me. <laughs> My book that was just not for me was Green Lantern's New Guardian Annual Number 1. In this... Star Sapphire is charged with finding the Lady Sticks to try and break the treaty so that they can better combat the Green Lantern Corps in the Rise of the Third Army story arc. Mm. Isn't that what? coming along? Yes. It is yeah. coming to a close mm. the end of this month, I believe, and yeah. then it goes into Wrath of the First Lanterns. Um, More crossovers. What I did not appreciate about it 
was that I didn't know, because I'm not a New Guardians follower, I don't know what the color spectrums are. Uh, and I really, really feel like this was a good opportunity for DC. So you got a little DC. bit lost on what each color means. Exactly. Okay. Their, what their particular job was in the, the New Guardians. So I really feel like DC could have helped themselves and helped the readers by instead of having a full page ad on the inside of the cover, giving us a rundown on the colors. I'm not asking for a rundown on the characters. Well, I will agree. If just you are, the colors. If you are new to the Green Lantern, then yeah, a nice sheet of what each color mm -hmm. means or represents would be actually would very be. informative. Exactly. For and anyone an, that's new to the series. And an annual is a great opportunity to take that yeah. that step in letting people know. Agreed. That said, the second story... Nope. My apologies. One story in this one. <laughs> this book leads into my next book, which I'm going to do right now. Okay. And that was... Threshold number one, The Hunted. Hmm. In this book, we're following Jedediah. He's a Green Lantern, and he is stuck on Lady Styx's primary planet named Tolerance. And he is being hunted by every single person that lives on that planet. They have set up a game <laughs> where the criminals... Welcome to Survivor. <laughs> It's a <laughs> threshold edition. Kind of, yeah. Mm. Basically, if you're a criminal and you're caught, you are sentenced to the game, and you become one of the hunted. And it's fair game for anybody to hunt you. They want to hunt you because there's a bounty on your head, and they get to collect it. This was a really good book. I like the direction that it's going in. I'm trying really hard not to tell too much, because the first story in the book is fairly short. Mm. The second story follows Larflees. I wanted to make sure that I said it properly. Larflees is the orange lantern. He's all about greed and avarice. Mm. And Larflees has kidnapped one of the guardians from Oa and has asked him, well, commanded him really, to write the book of Larflees. In the beginning, there was Larflees, and it's... It's cute and adorable. I loved this story. The twist comes in when Larflees has to go out and he's, he's been alerted that people are talking about the Orange Lantern and they're blaming a different Orange Lantern for a task. So he has to deal with that. Hmm. When he comes back, he finds that his cave is empty of all of his things. He's been repoed. Oh, it's really good. I have not done either story in this book justice because they're both very, very good, and I'm trying not to tell too much of the story. Larflees is hilarious. He's probably my favorite Lantern character. You should pick up this book just for Larflees. All right. Since Truly did two, I'll do two as well, and we'll start with The Highways, number one by John Byrne. In this one, young Eddie Wallace is about to discover just how dangerous a solar system can be after he joins the crew of a freighter that hauls cargo along the highways of the cosmos. Cool. It's a cool job. Um, this is my more or less pick of the week, okay? Um, it's the best out of the four that I have to suffer mm -hmm. through, but it's not John Byrne's best. Okay. Um, I like what I see here. It's just I can't really get into the characters too much. And that's kind of sad because I generally enjoy John Byrne stories. Uh, the art here is really nice. It's the classic John Byrne style, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so it really works. Uh, there's a character that I really enjoy uh, that is in like a multicolored spacesuit. Um, that's and cool. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Multicolored spacesuit. Huh. Um, but super multicolored. Yeah, it's wicked. A little <laughs> bit psychedelic. Pretty much, yeah. But that, I enjoyed that. That was kind of funny to see because it kept changing throughout mm -hmm. the entire book. So I enjoyed that. That was interesting. Um, characters are interesting here. It's just they're not that interesting, and there's not that much told about them, so you don't get to learn too much about them. So okay. hopefully you get to learn a bit more as the series goes on. But if you're a John Byrne fan, I can't 
recommend it as highly as his last series, Nextman, because it's just not as well written. But overall, it's a great, another great burn style book. It's just not as good as it could have been. Next up, we have Jinrise, number one. <laughs> Man, this book. Um, Alright, so, Andrew Marcus's life is changed when the Kabrani invade Earth, and it may come down to a mystical genie to save the world. Does he talk in Robin Williams' voice? No. Don't care. Nor is he a <laughs> former basketball player. Uh... Um, all right, so this one is weird. <laughs> the art looked pretty, though. The it art is okay. At points, it, it was pretty. It gets pretty messy at points as well, and very convoluted at points as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on between panels, and it makes for, well, a confusing mess at points. Um, overall, it's an okay read. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of convoluted in that if you're going to use a genie, why don't you just wish the aliens away <laughs> instead of battling them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you have an all-powerful genie and aliens are attacking the Earth, mm -hmm. wouldn't you just go, I wish for the aliens to be put into the middle of the sun? Or, or I, wish, I wish the aliens had never found us. Yeah, or there, there's millions of different things you could ask for rather than, hey, Genie, go battle those aliens. It's like, what? Yeah. So that's the only thing that really confuses me at the end of this particular book. Other than that, it's an okay book. It's, okay. it's a bit of fun. Uh, it's got interesting characters, but... Uh, Really, if you're going to use a genie plot... I'd Think about what a genie can do. Do, yeah. Um, I can't highly recommend it, but it is a bit of fun. So if you want to check out something a little different, do check it out. Last up for me this week is Savage Wolverine number one. Ah, Frank Cho. Yes. He did some great art in this book. Oh, I really enjoyed it. He does beautiful art, yeah. So That's not even as beautiful as the art that he can make. That was seems rushed to me. Really? Uh, so in this... But it's still nice. A S.H.I.E.L.D. team crashes on their geological expedition to map the Savage Lands. Ah, uh, the Savage Land. And it's up to Wolverine to Home find... Home of Kazar and Dinosaurs. It's up to Wolverine to find and save them. And as Jim just mentioned, there are dinosaurs, which is enough for me. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw dinosaurs, I was like, all right, sold. I'm in. Yep, I'll do it. Savage Land, uh, dinosaurs. That reminds me, i got to get in line for Jurassic Park 4 pretty soon. It's coming out next year. Maybe a little soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. You might be a little bit soon on that one. Yeah. yeah. So, this is a really, really good book. I highly recommend picking it up. There are some really great points to it. I think it's going to go in a great direction. And dinosaurs. Yep. Can't selling, go wrong with dinosaurs. Selling point right there. Dinosaurs. All right. And last for me this week is Repossessed, number one. And in this one, in a world where demonic possession is commonplace, it's up to a crew of overworked repo guys to repossess the victims with old grimoires and big guns. Now... The agency is hired to track down the daughter of a rich New York City banker who ran away to Vegas, but there's a lot of demons between them and their goal. Cool. Alright, this book is okay. It sounds like they have a neat story premise. It's a very neat story premise. It's been done, but it's still a lot of fun. You've got some really fun characters in here mm -hmm. and some really fun settings. So it does work as a whole. It's just... The way it's written, it kind of flop, flip flops a bit, and that really hurts it to me. Okay. Um, art wise, it's really nice to look at. Uh, there is some eh, screwiness with the panels and parts. Okay. But other than that, I mean, I enjoy it. The flow is good. A heck of a lot better than Grim Fairy Tales, anyway. But I enjoyed this. Uh, it was not half bad. It could have been a bit better, but it was not terrible. Okay. Um, if you're in for a 
standard demon hunting story slash repossession type thing, then this is for you. But uh, if you're not into that, it does get a very, very preachy at points. So you do have to avoid that, but I still enjoyed it overall. It's not a bad book, it's just at points it will get a bit on your nerves. So do check it out. I did enjoy it. It just, like I said, it just gets a little bit preachy. Um, so that brings us to the close of another episode. We will see you next week. We are off to celebrate some birthdays and have some fun. See, see you later. In advance.